How's everyone doing today? I hope you guys are doing great. Hello! Hello! Oh my gosh, it's been such a long time. I know, it's so good to see you. Wow. Um, I'm so thrilled that you're here. Thank you for doing this. Of course, it should be fun. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to say hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, with, on Talking with the Stars. And our star today is <laughs> Boston Ballet soloist, Lawrence Rines. Welcome, Lawrence. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. What are you up to? What's your day been like? Um, you know, just a normal COVID day. I woke up, um, had some breakfast. Mm -hmm. I uh, took a like kitchen ballet class. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> I love it. And then I just watched some TV. Um, yeah, read a little bit. You know, it feels like I'm having like kind of the same day just over and over again. I know, I feel it's like a, some sort of deja vu and it just keeps on repeating itself. And uh, yeah. this is what's keeping me going, talking with all of you guys. And I think it's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the company providing class for you guys or are you guys just taking class with everyone? Isabel Bolson and James <laughs> and uh, everyone else. <laughs> Um, so the, um, the Boston Ballet School actually has like a, a virtual portal where you can sign on and, um, take classes from teachers who teach in the school, uh, which is basically all the teachers who teach in the school teach the company kind of. So yeah, they are providing some things, but I kind of like the aspect of taking people's classes that you can never take. Right. Which is like really awesome and really cool. I guess it's like the silver lining of this whole situation. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, I, I kind of like the fact that of t taking other people's classes more than taking like the classes that I can normally take here in Boston. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea to, you know, kind of balance within your own teachers and everyone else. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so let's get started. And Lawrence, why don't you start by telling us your, where are you coming from? Where are you from? Your school, everything, how you started in dance. Cool. Um, so I grew up in a suburb outside of Philadelphia called King of Prussia. And how I started dance was I was studied gymnastics from, I think I was about four until around like 10 or 11. Um, and I started to grow around like eight or nine. And so I had these horrible, horrible growth pains. Oh, wow. And um, to the point where like gymnastics was like unbearable, like I, like I physically couldn't do it. And so basically um, we had to take dance classes to help with like coordination and stuff like that, um, which I think they offered like once or twice a week. Um, and so when gymnastics was looking a little bit like unreasonable for me to continue, my mom suggested, she was like, oh, you know, why don't you like stick with dance and see, you know, it doesn't seem as like high impact or as painful as gymnastics can be. So why don't you just like try to keep that up if you like it and stuff like that. Um, little did she know. <laughs> little did she know, exactly. <clears throat> And so um, after that, I started taking class and then a, a teacher <clears throat> basically saw that I had like a ballet physique. And so she, she suggested that I um, audition for the rock school <clears throat> in Philadelphia, which is where we met. That's right. Yeah. Um, so then I went to the rock school from, I think I was about 10 until... I was 16, and then I went to the School of American Ballet in New York. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, this is actually something that I wanted to ask you, because, I mean, the School of American Ballet is um, kind of a, a big deal. I mean, I think, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and as most of us dancers know, the whole goal of getting into SAB is to get into New York City Ballet. So yeah. what was that like? Um, I... Uh, it was like the the most surreal experience, I, I guess, as being a teenager, 
because I remember um, kind of at that age when I was looking to like go to another school was when like YouTube kind of started. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember seeing like YouTubes of like different like Balanchine, like short things of like Balanchine ballets and stuff like that. Um, and I was like, oh my God, this choreography is amazing. I would like love to go to the school. It's like incredible. And me and my friend, um, my best friend, Taylor Stanley, decided to audition for SAB Summer Course together. And we both got in the school year um, when we auditioned for the summer program. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like this crazy thing. And then I went to New York for the summer and then I moved there the following September. Great. So I didn't know you guys were in the same class in SAB, were you? Or yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I did not mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. That kind of spoils one of my questions for the lightning round, but that's okay. Well, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> um, and yeah, so, and after that, how do you, how do you came about joining Boston Ballet? Because um, we know that you've been with Boston for your whole career. And, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you want to tell us more about that? Um, so basically my graduating year of SAB was the year of the recession here in the States. So basically all <clears throat> arts organizations were like really, really suffering. Mm -hmm. And, um, basically, uh, they sat a couple of us down at SAB and were basically like, we don't even know if we can take any apprentices into, um, New York City Ballet this year. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure you audition, try and get jobs. We don't know who's, uh, who's has any jobs open, who has any jobs available, but just really, really make sure that you audition just in case you can't get into, right. Peter doesn't accept you into the apprentice program this year. And so that kind of scared the shit out of me, excuse me. And um, we, uh, yeah, I auditioned like as many companies as I could just um, by making sure that I would eventually get a job. Mm -hmm. And so um, I ended up coming to Boston because um, Margaret Tracy, who was a principal dancer with New York City Ballet, and her husband, Russell Kaiser, mm -hmm. were moving to Boston. She was going to be the head of the school, and he was going to work in the company. And so I was like, oh, amazing. I have, like, this balancing tie that's going to Boston. So that would be, like, really cool. Um, so then I auditioned and talked to Margaret while I was there. And then I ended up getting um, a, a spot in the second company. Amazing. And then so I went back to SAB and kind of told them. And then at the end of the school year, we learned that um, usually New York City Ballet takes about like seven to 10 people a year from the school into the apprentice program. My year, they only took four. Mm, I see. Yeah. If I if the numbers are correct, five. Yeah. So like a very very small group of people. Um, and our class, like our graduating class, was like amazing. Everyone in it is now like a super successful um, dancer, which is like super cool. Um, but yeah, so it ended up being kind of like you go there for like one goal, but then I ended up being in Boston, and it's been amazing. Amazing. And uh, I mean, with those legs for days, I'm pretty sure you escalated through the ranks pretty quickly. And how's your experience? Uh, because coming from ACB being a pure balancing school, and then yeah. adjusting to the repertoire of the company, how do you find that? Um, so it was definitely like hard for me, because I, I did come like straight from SAB to Boston. And now um, there are a lot more diverse, I wouldn't say the company is very diverse, but there weren't a lot of balancing dancers, like strict balancing dancers in the company when I joined. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of like me by myself right. and then with the rest of these like amazing, amazing dancers. But I kind of felt like I was alone in a, in a sense, artistically. Um, and the first ballet I ever performed um, at Boston was Giselle. And I never performed a classical ballet before in my life. Um, so it was definitely like a, a lot of like, Lawrence, what the hell are you doing kind of thing? Because I just wasn't used to the style or the way of movement or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it was kind of this 
learning curve where, and everyone goes through it. I felt super comfortable in like half of the rep at Boston Ballet. And then I felt not so comfortable in the other half. So um, yeah, it was just getting used to um, feeling okay with that. And I still feel the same way, even 10, 10, 11 years later. I still feel exactly the same way, but I'm learning every day. And that's the journey of this job. Totally. Absolutely. Um, okay. I want to talk about your most performed roles. And um, I'm going to take a wild guess. What about the bear on the Nutcracker? <laughs> um, yes, that is for sure my <laughs> most performed role. I think any like uh, American dancer is going to say that a role in Nutcracker is definitely something that they perform the most. Um, I have been doing three roles um, since I was in the second company um, at Boston Ballet. So my first was the bear. Second, I learned the Harlequin doll in first act as well and Russian. And um, last season was my last year of doing the bear, Yay. but I hold the, I am the reigning uh, champ of the person who has, who has done the bear for as many years. How many years, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, so I've done the bear for 10 Nutcrackers seasons. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, wow. you're a trooper. <laughs> That is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, considering everything choreography and uh, costume, uh, yes. that's a big, big achievement. But other, yeah. than, other than the bear, what is your most performed role, you will say? Um, here in Boston, I besides Nutcracker, there was a, there was a, a point in... Um, my career where we performed one of William Forsythe's ballets called Second Detail. Mm -hmm. We did it for, it ended up being like five seasons, like in a row. We did it, I think like two seasons in Boston and then on three separate tours. Wow. And so that I think is my most performed ballet besides Nutcracker, obviously. That's so cool. I love Second Detail. Um, yeah, we just yeah. had a chance to see it with the National Ballet of Canada. Yeah. Oh gosh. <clears throat> yeah, it's so um, fun. <laughs> and um, about it doesn't have to be this role in specific, but is there a show, um, a performance that you will say it's um, you hold very near and dear to your heart? It changed something in the way you dance, or in the way you see dance, or something special happened in that show? Woo. Um. Yeah, I would probably say my first, like, featured role. Um, yeah, so when I, I think it was my second year in the company, we were doing a ballet called Symphony and Sea by George Balanchine. Mm -hmm. And I kind of was like, I was super excited because I loved watching this ballet when I was in the school. And I remember go, like going up to the role assignments, the casting, and just being like, oh my goodness, I'm a Demi in the fourth movement, that's crazy. And then I like kind of was looking and someone was like, oh my God, look up there, because I was in the course, so I wasn't even looking at the principal soloist list at all. And I was like third cast for the third movement principal. And I was just like, oh my goodness, like that is insane. Like I always dreamed that I wanted to do this part. Um, but I never really thought that it would happen like this soon or like at all kind of ever. Um, so I learned, um, I learned it, but I never ended up, I wasn't supposed to perform it. But then uh, two days before the opening night of the program, because of a string of injuries, mm -hmm. basically I had to like, I had one studio rehearsal, one stage rehearsal, and then my show was the second. Yeah, I had the second, no, the third show. So the Saturday matinee, opening night was Thursday, and then Saturday matinee was the show. Um, and I just remember the feeling of like, you are about to perform like ro a role that you have wanted to your whole life. Um, and this is like so insane to believe that this just kind of happened to me and the, my company trusted me being so young. I was 
21 when that happened. Um, so yeah, it was just like, it, it's, yeah, this definitely has like a special place in my heart, especially being a Balanchine ballet. And yeah, I have like the best memories from it. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, mm. That's great. And I'm pretty sure uh, you got there because you had amazing coaches um, and mm. everyone, not only your coaches, but the whole company backing you up, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, it was amazing because uh, when uh, I found out that I was going to perform it, Miko kind of, my director came up to me and was like, you know, I think I want you to do it. And I was like, okay, like, that's crazy. Like, I I know the steps, but I've never really, like, done them full out or mm -hmm. with another person or anything. Like, it was just so crazy. And then um, Russell Kaiser, the associate artistic director, actually, um, we came into the studio together on our day off, and he coached me on the role for, like, three hours that day. And it was like amazing. And there is something that is so special about like personal um, corrections and attention when it comes to ballet. Mm -hmm. So I think that also is the reason why it made it so special was because it was like a person trying to make me the best as I could be for the part. So it was super cool. Amazing. I love that. And uh, speaking of coach, uh, this is one of my favorite questions. If you could mm. train uh, with anyone, if you could choose a coach, uh, dead or alive, who would that mm -hmm. be? I... Mm. So I... So I have two, I have two answers, I guess. Okay. So... I'm very fortunate. So Boston Ballet has like an amazing um, collaboration with William Forsyth. So I get to work with him on multiple ballets a year for the past, I think we've worked with him for seven or eight years, personally. Um, so if that wasn't the case, I would definitely say him because his, he's like the nicest, sweetest guy ever and is so giving and um, artistically and personally he's just like the best and um it's really really changed me as like a person and as a dancer so definitely him but i already do get to work with him so right. that's not really like an answer to a question <laughs> but i would definitely say that i would love to talk or work with balanchine um i mean just to get into his head about how he created these works and the process of creating with Stravinsky, with these ballets and, you know, his muses and the directions that he went with certain things and even his like, his bad choices, his great choices, his weird choices, you know, I would just love to like pick his brain about it and kind of how he would feel about the fact that he is who he is now. Mm -hmm. Compared to like who he was, you know, choreographing exactly. Serenade in like, Connecticut, you know. Right, right. With, yeah. a, with a school, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, um, yeah, I feel like that, that's a great answer. Um, and I feel like most people, like, I don't understand why most people don't, wouldn't say that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so any, any funny memories that you can share with us on stage or on rehearsal? I don't know, whatever you want to share. Oh, okay. So um, I'm sure some some of if any of my company members are on this, they will remember this moment. But I had my first stage fall uh, last season. Oh, it was either last season or two seasons ago. I think it was last year. Um, I was actually performing as the bear, and in the bear dance, we um, we roll. We kind of are rolled out in this box, um, mm -hmm. but while you're being rolled out, you can't really hear the music because of it's like super low mm -hmm. and the wheels just going across the barley. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes. And so I was in the box and you kind of pop out and I popped out of the box and in my brain, I heard that I had to run around and be on center in like three counts. <laughs> so I like freaked out, jumped out of the box and like, like ran as fast as I could, but I slipped oh my God. and kind of fell and like did a body roll and then tried to like get up and it was just a hot mess. 
And I get up and I start the dance and every, the dance went fine, but I hear like the entire stage is like dying, like dying, dying, laughing. <laughs> and um, it was, I think it was like show like 35, like literally no one wanted to be there, you know, in party scene. And so it was kind of amazing that I sacrificed my body to, you know, for everyone else's like entertainment. Right. So I think that was, I, and sadly enough, like they didn't record that show. No. Because I would love to like watch it every freaking day that I was like sad or upset or anything because like the way that everyone was laughing was like the best reaction to it. I feel like we should start a petition because I'm pretty sure someone in the audience was filming it or something like that. I know, I know, I know. Finding uh, yeah. Lawrence Bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, that, yeah, that was definitely probably my favorite. And thankfully I could like just take it as a funny thing, you know, because a lot of people fall and they're like so serious and so upset mm -hmm. and stuff. But, you know, the best thing was just taking that like stupid bare head off and like all of my friends coming into the dressing room, just like fully like in tears laughing. And we had the opportunity to like laugh together, you know, in it. So it was, it was really funny. Amazing. I love that. And I um, mean, great. Like that you can yeah. laugh at it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. On video. Um, yeah. I, like, I wanted specifically to ask you this question because uh, I'm very interested. If you were not a ballet dancer, what would you be? Um, so I would definitely want to be in a field that I was, like, passionate about. So I'm very much into fashion. Um, I don't think that I would be in fashion, like, creatively. Like, I don't think that I have the, the desire to design. Um, but I would love to, I would have loved to be like a buyer or a stylist or, you know, something in the, the more functional commercial side of fashion than the creative side. Um, but then I also have like a knack for throwing parties. So I think that I, if I could work at like event planning or party planning or something like that, like I love going out to restaurants and bars and like, you know, doing that whole thing. And I'm like, I know a lot of people in the restaurant bar industry. So I end up, Same. you know, kind of getting groups of my friends together to go to, you know, different openings of clubs and bars and stuff like that. So yeah, I love doing that kind of stuff. So I feel like I would want to do something in, in those realms if I wasn't a dancer. That's great. Maybe some like PR or I don't know. Something yeah. Like yeah. I, I think like, it, it yeah sorry I okay. think it would just be I think it would just be fun also to do something that's not has nothing to do with like dance you know absolutely totally yeah um speaking of your parties what's the best party you've thrown what's it like oh the best party oh wow 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 <laughs> um I've I I love my birthday Mm -hmm. And so I would say like one of the most like memorable um, birthdays that I had was I um, had a party like in a bar and then a big group of me and my friends ended up being like, it was supposed to be like 15 people, but it ended up being like 25 people at the end of it, um, went down to a club underneath. Um, and it was like really fun, uh, like, really crazy. The club was like super, super crowded. And, you know, I had like a table reserved for me and my friends and it was like super fun. And I was kind of just like sitting around waiting for uh, to order drinks. <clears throat> and then I see like diagonally, like uh, from the corner of the bar, like a giant, giant cutout of my face, like approaching the table with like all these lights and sparklers. And they put one of the bottles of vodka in like a rocket ship. And it was like, there were girls like dancing around and it was just like super, super funny. And uh, we ended up having like a really good time. And I still have the cutout of my face in my closet. And it actually like scares me sometimes because I'll move a jacket and I'll just see like my face, like, Ow. you know, in the closet. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Amazing. That sounds like so much fun. Thank yeah. Thank you so much. We used to have so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> I was just talking to my husband and I was like, 
we were kids when we yeah. <laughs> hang out together. Yeah, um, children. Uh, so back then, our broke years, like I say, we were kids, and so much has happened in your life since. And one of the things that I absolutely in love with is your whole persona of Lola. Do you wanna <laughs> talk about Lola a little bit? Oh, yes. So actually, funny enough, you can um, thank James Whiteside for that. Mm -hmm. So when I first joined the company, James was still in Boston Ballet before he went to American Ballet Theater. And him and uh, two other people, uh, Leah Serio and Bradley Schleckheck, um, mm -hmm. who are like my best friends now, they were kind of awful. And when you first joined the company, if they didn't know your name, they would give you like a nickname, mm -hmm. you know, to basically that what they will call you until you were deemed worthy enough for them to learn your name, kind of. Right, right. And so um, there was a, a now extinct uh, dancewear brand called Lola Stretch. And so when I first joined the company, they knew that my name began with an L and then I was like super skinny and like awkward. And so they were like, oh my God, that's perfect. We're going to call you Lola Strat. Oh no, I think you froze. <laughs> it, was like, it was like super fun. And I was like, okay, sure. You know, this principal wants to call me Lola. Like I don't care. And now it has literally become like, people don't even, it's not that they don't know me, but people like, bb2 members will join the company and they know that like that's my name like right. they know that that's what they should call me like i have lola like tattooed on my finger like it's just now you really you want to show yeah. uh i don't know if you can see it oh cute i love it yeah and um now it's just like a part of like who i am and my identity and i think it's like super super funny and like friends not in the dance world um that I meet through, yeah, like so many different ways just have called me that. I actually, one of the bars that a friend of mine <clears throat> was the manager at named a drink after me and called it the Lola. I love this. Yeah, I mean, so I, it was, I, I it, it literally has just like, it's just been who I am since I joined Boston and it's, yeah. Amazing, I remember I having, having an obsession with that, uh, James video with um, oh, yeah. I Hate My Work. I love yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my friend. Look at this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Um, I don't know. Do you want to talk about anything else? <laughs> Before we get into the lightning round? No. I like the whole question thing. It's, it's, it's making me like answer on the spot. It's really cool. Yes. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. Let's go into the lightning round and we'll see how it goes from there. Which okay. Cool. Not really that fast. And you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, don't think too much about it, but don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So, what do you prefer? Time to your please. Oh, uh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> uh, I told you it wasn't that fast. So funny enough, that is like two things that I love to do because it is like the 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 epicenter of balancing technique. So I love to like just be in plie and we do like 90,000 tondus. So I guess I guess if I had to pick plies. All right. Perfect. Uh, jumps or turns? Oh, jumps. I hate turning. Hate. <laughs> hate it, hate it, hate it. Um, Apollo or prodigal son? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Apollo. For for the whole ballet, Apollo. But Prodigal is like so epic. It is. But you know what? For words where I think you'll be great in Apollo. I can't wait oh, to see that. <laughs> I, would, I would die. I would die. Um, diamonds or rubies? You are killing me. <laughs> um, wait for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I diamonds but it has to be like the right principal couple I've seen a lot of diamonds where I will start to watch it and immediately will want to like do something else because like if you don't get the paw right then it kind of doesn't set the tone for like the rest of it 
Ruby's is kind of more like fun and cool and I love to dance it, but to watch definitely diamonds. Mm. These are tough, tough. Uh, also people, if you guys want to ask, ask uh, Lawrence any questions, please go ahead. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Next one is, um, wait, what is this? Mar Jacobs or Gucci? Uh, actually, funny enough, I, oh, I would say Gucci just because of the shoes. I have a lot of Gucci shoes. Um, yeah. Which brings me actually wanted to ask you, what was the first thing uh, that you bought with your first paycheck from the company? I think it was... I think I still have it, actually. It was a, a ring from David Yerman. Mm, nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, somebody is asking, Celine or Saint Laurent? Oh. <laughs> oh my God, that's so bad. Okay, so. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so. Celine. I would say Celine, not so much current Celine, but more because like Phoebe Philo Celine is like iconic and forever. Um, I would have to say Celine. Yeah. All right. Uh, somebody else is asking, what is your favorite coda? My favorite coda. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess because we were just talking about a diamonds. The diamond scherzo technically is like the coda, um, and it's super cool with all of the demis and the male solo and the female solo is like super cool and iconic. Um, so yeah, the diamonds coda. All right, great. Um, actually, the other balancing question that I was going to ask you: forties um, or serenade? Serenade. Right, nice. Um, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, this is a very personal for you. Philly, New York, or Boston? Mm -hmm. um, I would have to say Boston. Really? <laughs> yeah, because New York, I love New York, um, but I, I've now entered into the age where like New York stresses me out. So I love to go and I love to visit because my friends are there and um, it's just like a good time to see them. But when I'm there for longer than three days, I want to scratch my eyeballs out because like the intensity and the like the the pace and like ugh, like everything just like makes me my shoulders go like this. Getting all um, our friend. Welcome yeah, the club. <laughs> exactly. Um, and Boston is just like where I grew up and like help me shape who I am today. You know, like I love Philly and I love King of Prussia because like that is my like home. But like, you know, like <clears throat> I now live with my boyfriend who I've been with for five years. And, you know, like I'm still dancing at Boston Ballet where I joined when I was like turning 18 years old and now I'm 29. So it's just, yeah, it's just, I love it so much and it has like a special place in my heart. I know people like to shit on Boston a lot because it's like, you know, it's not as exciting of a city to live in, but that's what I love about it, you know? Like, I love that it's so cute and so clean and it has kind of like a European um, vibe to it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, I did not remember that you were like, 29 like I thought you were a lot younger than I am so I don't know look at that <laughs> okay uh Rob or Ronnie somebody's asking oh like like the housewives I guess so <laughs> okay so we're housewives of Beverly Hills over housewives in New York obviously Beverly Hills because they have the most money and their lives are so ridiculous and incredible. Um, New York is fun, but it's getting a little bit like ratchet, like not fierce, 
for me. Like everyone's like drunk and kind of like falling all over the place and like, that's fun and cute. But like, I also want you to have like, <clears throat> you know, just like your, the, the hardest thing you have to do is to, like which Bentley you're going to drive for the day. Right. Right. Totally. Yeah. I'm like, sorry, I'm totally unfamiliar with um, that <laughs> realm of TV. <laughs> um, okay, somebody's asking, favorite female variation? Oh. <laughs> um, now I'm trying to, like, think of all of them. It does it have to be classical? Is it classical? I don't know. Does, yeah, does it have to be classical? Because if it's balancing, I can, I love um, the principal variation and Donizetti variations. I think that is like super fun. Um, classically, just because Verkella asked, I'll say Lilac Fairy. Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. They say it's Patty Cut. <laughs> oh, that is true. That is true. I do love all of those. But if I had to pick which variation in that Patty Cut, it would be, I don't know the, like, each of their names, but what was Ashley's variation? Was that the third one? The, like, uh -huh. most ridiculous one. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my trivia is not that good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody else is asking, funniest moment on stage other than the bear? Oh, just any, like, I I love, obviously, that I'm a soloist in the company, but I just miss, like, being in the core and just you're all on stage. And obviously, you care about your job, but there are some core dances that are just, like, you don't, you don't, you can be a trained monkey and do them sometimes. Oh, yeah. So I just miss, like, being on stage with a bunch of people and just, like, laughing and talking and, you know... It is amazing being in this point in my career, but I also sometimes hate the fact that like every time I go on stage is something semi stressful. Right. <laughs> um, so I do yeah. miss that aspect of like the fun community, like, you know, just party scene when you're a party parent and just like being silly with your friends on stage. Like I do miss miss that. Full disclaimer for the students that are watching us. <laughs> Don't do that when you're in school. Wait until no, you of course not. Of course not. Into the company. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It comes with video. it comes with uh, the responsibility Absolutely. of being a, a company member. All right. Um, yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> this is my question that you spoil. But who's your best friend, Taylor Stanley or Jeffrey Sirio? because I grew up with him and I've known him for the longest time of my life but I love Jeff so much and if he ever sees this I hope he knows that I love him a lot um, <laughs> but yes I would have to say Taylor just from the time frame. right um, I have to confess that I only I'm only asking this question because I've always had a crush on Jeffrey so uh, <laughs> and my and my husband knows it so don't worry okay. <laughs> no. um, sorry <laughs> oh, uh, all right. Uh, who's your favorite dancer? Alive or dead? Sorry? Alive or dead? Ooh, both. <laughs> um, alive? Probably for like inspiration, Peter Bowl. Like, he was, like, watching videos of him, he was uh, just so amazing technically, but also his artistry, and, like, even though he's not, he's not super tall, but he's not super short, um, but he can move, like, super fast, and, uh, like, so clean and so clear, and, um, yeah, I always loved the way that he, um, yeah, danced. Amazing. What about dead? <laughs> dead. I sound like such a balancing butthead. It's hilarious. Um, dead yeah. would probably be Viola Verde. Um, because she, uh, I mean, 
her work with Balanchine and then the, what they created with the Emeralds and Chai Pa and Donna Zetti and all of these things, um, you know, it was just phenomenal. So, yeah. Amazing. I love that. All right. Um, yeah, I think, I think this has been great. And the one last thing that I want to finish off with, um, if you could describe um, what dance means for you in a sentence, what would that be? Well, especially now, since we are in this like super weird time, um with the whole quarantine thing um it has made me realize you know every every person in the company we have our gripes and you know it, sometimes going to work becomes a job um but it truly is like this whole thing has made me realize that dance is my passion and it's what i love to do like i you know i joke around a lot and you know, I say all these things, but, you know, I really do miss going to work, even though some days I definitely say I don't want to go to work. But, um, yeah, it has definitely made me um, realize how special and amazing it is to do what I do. Amazing. I think so, too. God bless. Yeah, that I definitely was that. not one sentence, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, yeah. Well, thank you very much. I am so happy to see you. I've missed you so much. And uh, yeah, I have to get to Toronto. I came to Montreal to visit my friend Raquel. So next time, I'll, 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 Raquel will kill me if I don't come to Montreal. But I will definitely come to both. Listen, I'll go to Montreal. I love Montreal. It's one of my favorite places to eat. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the cutest. I love it so much. Me too. It's like a little Europe here in uh, Canada, so. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And uh, people, if you guys want to ask him any questions, send me a private message and I'll make sure that he answers your questions. <laughs> no. um, and uh, everyone, uh, don't forget to follow us and stay tuned because we'll be interviewing Sarah Michelle Moroski, who's another uh, one of our classmates. Oh, um, yeah. Friday. Tell her I say hi when you talk to her. I will. And <laughs> we will be interviewing uh, Josvani Ramos from Colorado Ballet on Sunday. Cool. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Have a delicious dinner. And bye, Lawrence. Bye. Thank it was you. so good to see you. So good to see you, too. Bye. Bye, everyone.